Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show where we talk about real life but we don't take life too seriously. And we hear the stories of everyday people. My name is Shireen and we have Dina here and today we are talking about illness. Cue the intro. Dina is here and she actually reached out to me and had all these great ideas so I'm gonna have to have you back. Dina wanted to talk about illness and like the stigmas in just society in general but specifically the Indian community. I think a lot of my videos are kind of in that direction because that's what we know. We are Indian, Indian Americans, we um, are growing up with Indian parents and we have Indian families. What was your experience? with your illness? I was diagnosed with uh, uh, systemic lupus, uh, mm -hmm. nephritis, so which means that I have um, advanced kidney inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually diagnosed about 25 years ago. Okay, so, so you were been, very young. It's been a minute. It's like when I was first diagnosed, uh, certainly the focus point being like just trying to figure out what the heck was going on with me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once we started figuring it out and, you know, kind of understanding what was going on, then there was this whole, like, basket of, like, you know, don't talk about it, don't tell people, especially, yeah. you know, the family, don't tell Indians, don't talk about it with your friends. Yeah. And, you know, just this hush-hush around it um, that came from not only my parents, but, you know, some of the other people in my family and friend circle as well. Yeah. I, I feel like my first reaction is people don't know a lot about it. Right. right and so it's that fear of the unknown mm -hmm. oh my gosh this is so scary what do I True. say mm -hmm. and so what has your experience been like I mean there, that definitely exists there's yeah. just people that have no idea they've not they've either heard of it and have no idea what it is or yeah. never heard of it on top of it mm -hmm. um, they think they know what it is they think I might be contagious like there's yeah. all kinds of things floating out there right um, and then others who just like feel like they somehow need to say something to me to make me feel better or to fix it or to yeah. you know help me be you know positive about it and right. you know um, really it's none of those things it's just you know kind of sit back and support me as I maneuver my life and right. figure out what I need to do yeah and have you been open I've been very open from okay. day one has have people's reactions just been kind of awkward or I've uh, experienced everything from you know I don't want to make it seem like it's all been you know kind oh, yeah. of crazy or bad like yeah. I have incredible friends and family that have been supportive from the start and mm -hmm. um, uh, and then others who you know just really it's been awkward or they aren't quite sure what to say yeah. or you know some who've just you know decided that maybe they don't want to talk to me anymore and you know oh, wow. lost friends along the way and yeah it's all part of it it's all part of the the you know part of life the process so. yeah and I don't understand why people would think mm -hmm. to just stop being friends with you I think there you know for some people like it's it's too hard you know it's it's like you know they they want they want to take life like really you know laid back easy. and easy mm -hmm. and just being near me and knowing that I'm going through a difficult time they're afraid of saying the wrong thing or being mm. you know um, happy when I might not be happy that day yeah. or whatever it might be and so it's too hard yeah um, and you know for others it's you know they just really feel they feel helpless and they just really want to you know be able to um, make it better for me and yeah. they can't you know sometimes you know with illness especially with chronic illness like you can't keep up or and stuff mm -hmm. like that like I miss out on things because yeah you know, I might have to change plans because I don't feel yeah. well or I can't you know make it to something and after a point there are some people that just you know they feel like it might be an excuse or they're just mm. tired of asking if my answer is um, often no I won't say consistently because you try. I, I try you try, you try I push myself and I actually probably function a lot higher if you will than a lot of people with chronic illness because mm -hmm. I just you know that's how I choose to live my life and I want to be out there out and yeah. about living my life but um you know I I try to meet my friends where they're at and yeah. hope for the same back yeah and I think that's what I was thinking is we we're just like reciprocating what you would expect from from them and, Absolutely. and I think when people think it's hard because of what you're going through you're going to go through something in your life where you're going to need people and that that excuse where you know you miss things you forget to invite people because maybe you're not seeing them right. as, as often but you have to be understanding mm -hmm. and the people that you really support are going to be there for you when you need them people just want to kind of take the those easy friendships where I think about like high school college like you have those easy friendships mm -hmm. and then afterwards you have to actually try to and maintain those yeah. re maintain those relationships um, I understand people being uncomfortable I think we need to get 
more comfortable with being uncomfortable. Absolutely. And okay. having conversations. Absolutely. And I mean, that's, that's what I'm doing, right? Yeah. We need to get better about just like ripping the bandaid off quickly and not avoiding those conversations. Like maybe you tell them what's going on with you and then you don't have any, you don't need any solutions. You just be like, you know, I'm here to talk. I'm here, I'm just here for you, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go do your homework, right? Mm -hmm. You can go and do some research and, and figure out more information. And if you feel like you need more, then maybe you go back to that person and ask them, because mm -hmm. I'm sure they want to share, right? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're open to sharing? Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, my thing is, it, if, if I share my story or my experiences, if there's at least one person out there that feels like they can then relate or yeah. they can come to me with whatever they might be facing right. or a parent or loved one or sibling might be facing, then, you know, it's, it's made, it's made my journey not in vain. Yeah. Um, and I can then be um, impactful on, you know, for other people. And I feel like that's part of my purpose. I mean, it's what for I've sure. done, you know, decided for my career path and, yeah. you know, Tell I- Tell them about your career. Yeah. So I, um, I actually work for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah. So I've been there for about 19 years now and it's clearly, I love what I do. Yeah. Um, and doing amazing things. Yeah. yeah. And so the perspective that I get to bring to the table in my job is that if I can get up and get out of bed, regardless of what I'm facing, I'm still ahead of the game because mm -hmm. the children and families that we're serving and working with, um, are facing, you know, much more, difficult. much more difficult situations. Right. So. And you're a part of that story and a part of that process to bring them joy. Absolutely. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Why our community is so hush hush about illness. It's like you're tarnished. You know, you weren't married at that point, right? Correct. So mm -hmm. are you going to be a suitable partner? Are people right. gonna, are families gonna want to welcome you into their their family? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, th I think that's definitely part of it. You know, mm -hmm. there, it was part of the conversation with my family, yeah. you know, that like, you know, what if, you know, someone finds out or what if they decide that that wouldn't be a possibility and, you know, for me at the time, certainly survival was the main, you know, um, that was priority. Point. That was priority. Yeah. Um, I wasn't even thinking about, you know, getting married at the time. But, yeah. Um, for How me, old were you at the time? I was 19 okay. when I started having symptoms. Yeah. So it's always about, you know, I'll I'll meet the right person when I meet the right person, and if mm -hmm. that person can, you know, accept me for everything that I am, just as I will for them, then yeah. it's it'll be meant to be. And yeah. you know, I certainly didn't want to ever, you know, consider being part of a family that would see that as, you know, make me less than in some way, or yeah. tarnished, or right. you know, like unsuitable, or whatever you want to call it, or less than perfect. You right. Know, and it's one thing like you can't control it, even if it was something that you did mm -hmm. to bring on to yourself you're already it's already here right, right? so what can we do right right and you met a great person mm -hmm. who is my like extended family exactly. relative yeah. and that they're a great family we have been together for a long time we have yeah. we have been married for 15 years oh and my dating for uh three and a half prior to that so mm -hmm. for us you know having having a baby was um, a long path, a long journey, um, partly because I went through chemotherapy twice um, um, associated with the lupus nephritis. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then the lupus alone, you know, kidney disease, the medications, like everything factored in. Um, there was a strong probability and possibility that we um, maybe couldn't have our own children. Yeah. Um, and fortunately, you now Nitin knew that going into it. Yeah. So not only did he, you know, um, meet me where I was and, and, you know, accept me for everything that I was and everything that I wasn't, mm -hmm. he, um, you know, also accepted the fact that we potentially may not have had our own children and yeah. was totally still in it. And, yeah. um, and, and so, that's the kind of partner yeah, you want. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we went on the journey together and, Fortunately for us, we were actually able to have a child after many years, yeah. um, and we now have an 18-month-old baby. Yeah, that's so. beautiful. You don't need to know everything. You don't need to help them. Right. I think all you can really offer is support mm -hmm. and love and empathy. Um, and just empathy. Empathy. Just understand that you know, perspective-wise, everybody's facing something. So yeah. it's not just me. You know, yeah. this is this is my whatever you want to call it, cross to bear or whatever you want to call right. it, but. Everybody has something and kindness is the answer, you know, and stuff yeah. like be kind and you don't have to have the answers for anybody. You don't have to like fix anybody, um, no. but you know, don't run the other direction or try to solve their problems for them. Either. Right. I think in general, just being more patient with people, <sighs> understanding that what is going on at home, what is going on in their mind. Mm -hmm. They don't share everything. If you don't have any kind of diagnosis that that doesn't mean you're perfectly healthy, right? right? Like I, 
I look like a perfectly healthy person, but you know, mentally I've gone through things. Right now, I'm taking like my, my physical health more of a focus because as I get older, I know that it's just gonna get more challenging, and right. I shouldn't be huffing and puffing going up two flights of stairs. <laughs> like, and so I'm not perfect, and no one's perfect. Right. No and so is. recognize that. I'm, I'm sure your mom, you know, your parents were thinking about, you know, we don't want everyone to be talking about you, and that's a way to us protecting, right. you know, I think she's like trying to protect her child. But think about when you're gossiping. Mm -hmm. Is it is it harmful? You know, it's one thing to be talking about something with like to be productive. Like let's talk about this. You know, talk about my videos. I love if you guys yeah. talk about my videos yes. <laughs> and talk about these topics because let's have productive conversation. Absolutely. But if we're just talking about it to be like, oh my goodness, I wonder how she got it. I wonder how things are. I wonder if something's going on with her family. When you're having those conversations, would you want someone else to be talking about you that way? And check yourself. Yep. We need to check ourselves a little bit more. I make mistakes every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be more open about my mistakes in a way that's like forgiving and, and giving myself grace. We all have room for improvement. We could just be kinder. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you driving all the way out to Rogers Park, freaking no no, nor, most north side of Chicago <laughs> from Bolingbroke. Thank you so much for watching. We do a video every single week. So when I release this video, I'm gonna need you to get on Nitten's Instagram. Sounds good. <laughs> and we're gonna do a live, and I want people to come on and ask questions and really make this like a conversation, not just between me and you, not mm -hmm. just in my comments. Like, let's talk about this um, and continue the conversation. So, thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.